Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of November 27th. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. The sun has been really quiet this week, except for a few filament eruptions like the one you see right here, and some minor flare activity like what you see from this region here. And that's despite the fact we've had several very large active regions that have been rotating through Earth view this week. We also have had no Earth-directed solar storms, although we do have a solar storm that was erupted through the backside and is actually heading toward Mercury right now, and also our backside monitor, Stereo A. But I'll talk more about that in a minute. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the last time we actually had an M-class flare was clear back on November 16th. That was over 10 days ago. Since then, we've dropped down to about C-class activity, which makes the ham radio operators happy because there have been no disruptions. And with the large spots on the sun all in a state of decay, it doesn't look like M-flares are going to pick up anytime soon. The one bright spot we've had is when we switched to our storm levels, we actually had a solar storm that missed Earth, but its wake was enough to give us active conditions back on the 16th and through the 17th, and then we've had unsettled conditions to active conditions since then because of some turbulent solar wind uh, that has just managed to rattle the Earth's shield kind of off and on, off and on, as you see by these yellow uh, uh, periods here. And that has brought us some gorgeous aurora, but very difficult to predict. Switching to our satellite views, here's the northern lights and here's the southern lines, you can see the aurora over the past week has been kind of on again, off again, with a lot of patchy bright spots in places, which has brought us some really gorgeous aurora all over the world. For example, we've had some amazing views in Alaska. You can see the patchiness of the aurora there. Also in Idaho, views in Washington State. We've had multiple views in Scotland. We've even had aurora in Russia. And we've had aurora in Canada, both in Quebec and uh, in Whistler. And of course, we've had some uh, gorgeous aurora australis in Tasmania. Returning to that backside solar storm, this is NASA's version of Enlil, our solar storm prediction model. And you can see that solar storm that was launched on the backside, uh, launched about the 25th, will hit Mercury around the 27th or 28th, and Stereo A possibly on the 29th. But that's the most significant solar storm that's been launched this week. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And just like the front side, the back side of the sun has been very quiet this week. We have been watching some slow-growing regions, which are just now reaching the Earth side of the disk, but we're not expecting any really large flares at this time. There's also that ejection that sent it off to Mercury. You can see it here. That's come off the back side. But this region and region 2205 won't reach the Earth side of the disk uh, for another five days, so probably won't see any in increase in activity until then. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2209 is disappearing off of the west limb and out of Earth view. It is in a state of decay, so we're not expecting to get any proton storms from it. Uh, region 2216, the other large uh, active region on the sun, is also in a state of decay, so we're not expecting to see uh, much activity from it either. The other uh, numbered regions are all in a state of growth, but it's a slow growth, so we're not expecting to see any solar storms or uh, large-scale flares from these regions. But, of course, all of this could change in a moment's notice. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating hitting some fast solar wind in the next few days, so NOAA has given us a 25% chance of minor storm conditions at high latitudes and about a 15% chance of active conditions at mid-latitudes, which will go right through Thanksgiving, so that should make you uh, aurora hunters quite happy over the holidays. Then things should probably die down uh, through the end of the month as there are no solar storms in sight as of yet. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the next week, NOAA has given us about a 30% chance of an M-class flare with region 2217 being the, region to, the main region to watch, uh, although there are a lot of slow-growing regions, so this uh, may change in the next few days. Also, with region 2209 rotating off to the west limb, NOAA has lowered our radiation storm risk down to very low levels, and it should maintain that uh, over the course of this week. So this week looks to be pretty quiet. Despite having a lot of active regions that are in Earth view this week, none of them seem to be uh, producers of very large flares. So that should be good news for you emergency and ham radio operators. We're not expecting a lot of disruptions this week. We also aren't anticipating any solar storms uh, that are earthward directed, just some fast wind that will be hitting us in the next couple days. So we might get a little dose of aurora, but nothing more than the same patchy stuff we've been seeing over the past week. So outside of that, 
It looks to be just like another sunny week in space. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.